Hey, what's going on, everybody? Movie Phantom here, and yes, time for another double feature. This is the Movie Phantom's whole review. Stammering over my own words. And uh, yes, tonight we are reviewing Halloween H2O, 20 years later, and Near Dark. Kind of spoiling my reviews, I guess. Uh, anyways, uh, let's start with Halloween. Halloween H20. Because isn't that really what it is? H20? H20? I don't. That's 20. That's, that's 20. Not O. Anyways, um, takes place 20 years after uh, the events of uh, Halloween. 1 and 2, I guess. And uh, yes, uh, Lori Strode has uh, changed her name and moved out to California. Oh, and. Four, five, and six never happened at all. I'll be honest with you. Uh, this is uh, actually the first Halloween movie I ever watched in theaters. Actually, uh, saved up my money, my allowance. Wow, that's how, I'm, I'm fucking old as shit. That's what I'm getting at, I guess. Uh, saved my allowance up and me and uh, Lynch and uh, Oh Jimbo from way back. Anybody don't remember Jimbo, he's, he made one appearance on the show and that was it. Uh, but three of us, you know, went to go see Halloween H2O. And I remember that was my only complaint, was the fact that, like, right off the bat. And I didn't quite get it. Like, I didn't quite get they were leaving it out like that. I was just like, why didn't they mention, like... And I still kept it, like, there. I was just like, she sacrificed herself so her daughter would be okay. I didn't quite realize they were just erasing it completely, you know. Um... But anyway, so yeah, it you know takes place twenty years later, and uh, uh, you know what? In fact, I'm not going to go, go through it scene by scene. You guys should have seen this already. I'm sure you have. Um, huge fan. I'm not going to lie. Granted, that one flaw, which that one gripe I have, where it just erased four, five, and six. Yeah, it's a pretty big gripe. But this is like a slasher movie done right. Like it literally is. It hits everything perfectly. And what amazes me. Is it's only like 86 minutes long. This thing is short as fuck. And yet, it has everything. It has character development. Really good kills. Uh, good story. The direction is really fucking awesome. Like, it literally included Steve Miner, who, uh... Oh, I'm fucking posing out right now. Friday the 13th. What the, he did two and three, I think? I'm going to say two and three. If I'm wrong, correct my shit down below. Um, but no, it's like it just everything was perfect about this movie. And it wraps up in 86 minutes. That's fucking incredible. Um, really dig it. This, uh, this clearly does have that Scream look. Uh, when Scream drops in 96, you know, it reinvigorated not only the uh, slasher franchise, but horror in general, really. And especially from Dimension, they were literally just like, oh, shit. Look at this. And so everything kind of went that way. Uh, I know he did last summer. Uh, Urban Legends, I don't think that was Dimension, but either way, it has that look. Uh, the, the, you know, the faculty. And then uh, Halloween H2O. And it literally, and it has that same kind of look, that same feel. And uh, But I'm okay with that. And of course, it just goes, you know, because Kevin Williamson, uh, not only was he like an executive producer or some shit, but he actually did a lot of the uh, rewrites that were, you know, very uncredited. He didn't get... The credit he deserves. But he did write, you know, did, did a lot of rewrites, which you can tell. And, uh, you know, definitely, you know, in the dialogue especially. Um, my boy Joseph Gordon Levitt's in this. Very small part in the very beginning, but fuck it. He's part of the Halloween family now. Love that. Uh, no, I mean, I don't know what I'll say about this one. I hate reviewing movies I like because I just, I can go on and on about how great it is, but then that's. You don't really want to hear that. Uh, big, big thumbs up for this movie. Uh, like I said, uh, if I mean, if there's any complaints at all, they're minor ones, such as like uh, his mask doesn't look that cool. That's all I got. That's really all I got. Uh, I, I love Jamie Lee Cur Curtis in this movie. I think, uh, especially her uh, character development, like her, her the arc of her character itself. I love the fact that. You know, it, it, you know, in the first two, I mean, I guess in a certain sense she had to kind of fight back, but it was definitely more out of fear. You know, she was just literally just trying to survive. But in this one, she has this, the opportunity to survive. She gets away. And yet, she goes ahead, she sends her son and, you know, son's girlfriend, sends him out. And dude, she fucking, you know, rock on the goddamn control pad, gate, lock, like there's no other way out, I guess. And dude, she goes back. She goes stalking back. 
and she kind of turns it, you know, back on him. And I love it because, you know, at this point, it's just like they're, they're going to clash. Like, she's wanting that clash. I fucking love it. The one thing I will say, and I'm not sure. If anybody knows the answer, please tell me. The ending. Like, do they have that in mind? Because, you know, in the beginning of Part 8, Resurrection, which we don't talk about very often around this show, um, you know, it's revealed that, you know, it's not Michael Myers at the end of this movie. It's actually the paramedic. Got his throat crushed, couldn't talk. Um... So, when I'm watching it, you know, and, and not just this time around, just ever since I've seen Part 8, every time I watch this movie now, I watch it thinking, okay, that's not Myers. That's not Myers at all. It's a paramedic. But it just comes off very goofy. Because it's just like, I, I'm imagining like this, this paramedic, like, you know, I'm getting inside of the mind of this paramedic, you know. He gets up, and he never, in, in truth be told, he does never attack, or sorry, I'm talking like a retard right now. He does not attack Jamie Lee at all in the entire fucking scene. He gets up, and as he kind of comes forward, she slams on the brakes, he goes through the windshield, and then she's like, come on. And then he sets up, and I'm just like, and his body's just like, man, this has got to be the worst fucking thing. I go to, you know, rescue somebody. There's a body who, you know, fell from a high, you know. The motherfucker gets up and chokes me out, and then I wake up in a fucking body bag, and then I go through a windshield. Like, how can this thing get any worse? And then, boom, hit by a van, tumble over, and then he's just like, God, my life sucks. Oh, you. What, what, are you, what are you doing? Head off. Rolls off. I don't know. I, I just don't know if like, that was intentional. Because it, it fits good. It does, you know, for the most part, I guess, work, you know. But I'm just, as I'm watching it now, I'm just kind of like, man, that's that, that paramedic. Poor guy. Poor fucking guy. Uh, everything's great. I love LL Cool J in this movie. Uh, definitely does better than Buster on. <laughs> I don't know why we all hate on Busta. Like, you can't really blame him in Resurrection, because I'm not going to lie, if, you know, they gave me the script, and they're like, listen, Phantom, we're going to have you Kung Fu Michael Myers, you know, and win. Uh, I'm not turning it down. I'm not going to lie. I'm going to be like, this is fucking horrible. You realize you're killing the franchise. Give me a karate gi. Let's do this. And then I get in there. Uh, but, I don't know. It's, it's it's a horrible movie, so it's easy to hate on him. But, uh, I don't know. I, I hear a lot, I always read a lot of reviews, and everybody shits on LL Cool J. And I, I liked it. I thought, you know, he, he he delivered the right amount of, like, comic relief he needed in this movie. I mean, because every, you know, movie's got, every slash movie kind of has that, like, side character who's a little goofy or whatnot. And, I don't know. I, I, always, I was always a fan of his anyways. So, I don't know. I like him this one. And then, the next year, he'll be doing Deep Blue Sea. And I like him in that movie, too, so... Survives. It proves that, you know, black people won't get killed in the first 20 minutes of a horror movie. They can survive till the end. As long as you're a rapper. And you can kung fu. Uh, so anyways, uh, but no, it's this great movie. I, I can go on and on. Josh Hartnett does a really good in this as well. Just a damn good movie all around. So, all right. Enough blowing that movie. Uh, Holler Committee, you hadn't seen it, check it out. Let's get on to the, 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 the main course here. This is the one where I'm just, uh, near dark. Near fucking dark. Uh, as a kid, I never watched it. This came out the same year as The Lost Boys. Lost Boys is a fucking classic to me. In our household, we watched it all the fucking time. In fact, the first three DVDs I've ever bought, period. I didn't buy them, they were gifts. But Lost Boys is one of them. Fucking love it. Like, it's just boom, one of my favorite movies. Uh, long, it was my favorite vampire movie for the longest time. From Dust Till Dawn, had to knock it off the perch. But still, it's up there. And, but I always heard great things about this. Everybody was like, oh, Gear Dark, fucking awesome. They combine the Western with it, and it's all, oh, it's great. Oh, you like aliens? It has, a, you know, half the cast of fucking aliens in it. You'll love it. Jim Cameron's wife, she, she, she directed it. It's great. Tangerine Dream Score. All right. So, uh, came across this in a Kmart, like, dirt cheap. Like, it was literally, I think I bought for, like, three bucks, something like that. It was, it was retarded cheap. And um, picked it up, and I was like, all right, let's, you know. And I wasn't, like, I wasn't even, like, all right. I was like, oh, hey, shit, three bucks for Near Dark? Classic vampire movie? Let's do it! And I get home, and I, in fact, uh, I'm not sure if this is like a national thing or what, but like uh, here in our neck of the woods, uh, Kmart has uh, a little Caesars in there. So I was really just waiting on my pizza. That's right. I was single in this chunky, and I was waiting for a large pizza that I was going to devour in one setting. I, I know it's sad, but it's just the truth. And so I was waiting for my pizza, and I was looking, because I always bum around DVDs. This is where I go. It's my go-to. Go to DVDs, look around, and then get my pizza. And came across this and was like, oh, shit. Guess I'm going to watch my pizza now. Oh, my God. The storyline here is basically, uh, is it, what, his name Caleb? Is that his name Caleb? Caleb uh, meets a mysterious girl who turns out to be a vampire, and she's part of like a 
nomad group of vampire, like a clan of vampires, and uh, he gets kind of taken to that world. Okay. I'm not saying the movie's a complete piece of shit. I'm not a fan of it. It leaves a bad taste in my mouth. But it starts off okay, I guess. I do like the fact that, like, okay, I get it. And this ain't just this movie. In almost every fucking vampire movie you've ever seen, you know, there's always that one scene. One scene, mind you, where the vampire's up to doing whatever, and it's like, oh shit, what time is it? Oh no, the your sun's coming up. That happens like 12 times in this fucking movie. Every goddamn scene, like every night. It's like they're doing shit around like 5 in the morning, they're like, oh wait, sun's coming up in 20 minutes. Oh fuck. It's like, every night? Really, guys? You guys go into this problem every goddamn night? The other thing is, and I'm not even going to go through this thing by saying, I'm just going to pick out what I hate about this movie. Uh, there's no continuity in, like, how much sun can kill you. Like, there would be scene where, like, Caleb's running toward the van, trying to save everybody else, and dude's like, yeah, he has a blanket on him and whatnot, but it's like, no, he's, he's burning up, clearly. In fact, he had to walk home from the van the first time. And it's like, okay, but it's like two different times he's out in the sun for a long fucking time. A long fucking time. He's okay. He's a-okay. Little kid, little Homer, fucking, and I, I didn't realize this until actually when I watched it this week. That little kid was uh, the priest from uh, The Exorcist. It was his boy who went on to write or co-write uh, Final Girls. So, yay. Uh, but here, uh, he's the kid. Who's a, he's, he's Homer. He's the vampire. He's like, he's like a, he's an old man stuck in a kid's body, right? So, if you use that argument like, well, you know, I don't know what your argument would be. It, it makes no sense. The kid gets out, and he's chasing after his other little girl because he wants a, he wants young pussy, I guess. I don't know. Like, what? He's going after his kid, I guess. He wants to, yeah, you know, I don't matter. He's chasing her down, and like, in no time, blows up. Like, <laughs> I'm like, what? Really? So, everybody else is just like roaming around, you. Anyways. Uh, yeah, it, it's fucking ridiculous. Um, another thing is, this whole, it, it, I feel like the love story is very forced. Alright? Caleb comes off as a date rapist anyways. Uh, and he does, and, and, whatever, I don't care what sexuality is, but he reminded me of Jake Gyllenhaal from Brokeback Mountain. That's not, I'm not, I don't care what his sexuality is, whatever. It, it's still, it's like, I'm looking, I'm just like, dude, like, you're, you're clearly a gay cowboy. I thought that before I saw I you know knew about Brokeback Mountain or seen Brokeback Mountain. I thought he was a gay cowboy. And then of course when Brokeback Mountain comes out, I'm like, holy shit, that's Jake Gyllenhaal. Like it's almost like you know. Anyways, he comes up as a date rapist, right? And it's like the girl clearly wants to go home. Take me home, take me home. He's like, not till you kiss me. It's like, dude, if you were slightly more ugly, maybe, that would come off creepy. Like I couldn't pull that off. The Phantom could not pull that off. If I'm in a truck and a girl's like, take me home. And I'm like, well. I'll take you home, but I need a kiss first. I'm getting hit with mace and a fucking restraining order. And that's the end of it right there. And then pff, handcuffs, and I'm got to like have people sign a paper when I move into the neighborhood or some shit. It's horrible. This motherfucker, though, it comes off charming, I guess. The whole thing. So she kisses him, and it bites him, right? Turns into a vampire, and it's like, okay, it turned out okay. But she could not have known that because it's so close to fucking daytime. In fact, at this point, you can see daylight in the background, she makes a run for it. It's like she left him to die. She did not have a backup. She didn't know that the other vampires were coming at all. She left him to die. So and then the guy over like, oh, there's a love story. I'm like, there ain't no fucking love story. Like, when I wake up, after I'd be like, okay, fuck, I'm a vampire now. Which I am a lie. I mean, I would much rather be on the vampire side of things. So I, it would take much to convince me. But I'd still hold that fucking grudge. Like, this bitch left me out to die. Like, she literally wasn't going to rescue me. She had no intentions of rescuing me. She bit me and left real quick, and then, pff, whatever. So, that's another gripe. The other one is, uh, I think it's that scene, when, you know, it's daytime, and the vampires are just driving around, because apparently you got tinted windows or whatever. It wasn't tinted They had to boil and shit up. I don't know how they were seeing, and how the sunlight... There's a lot of scenes where, like, sunlight's clearly on them, and they're not burning up, because, fuck, it's a low-budget vampire movie, but whatever. Uh, but there's a scene where it, it, it's just a prominent edge here. I don't know. It's like you got the nighttime scene, and they're driving, and then the next scene, it's like kind of like it looks like dawn. Like dawn's about to break. I didn't want to make a Twilight reference, but it's so easy in this fucking movie because it's pretty much the Twilight of the 80s. 
But then, like, the next scene, it's dark again. It's like, did you guys just drive all fucking day? Because you didn't really get far. If you did, you just went, like, one state over, which wouldn't have took an entire day of driving. I don't know. It, uh, shit like that, it, it, it bugged me. But let's get to the, the meat and potatoes of why this movie just, like, when I... Because I was kind of with it. Because, A... I like, I do like the cast, you know, uh, I like, well, I like Lance and, uh, Bill Paxton. I, I could, you know, take or leave anybody else. Uh, Bill Paxton, I think, still the show. Like, he's just fucking cool as fuck in this movie. However, and I love the, the, the bar scene. That's like the one scene everybody wants to talk about. And, I, and that, you, you can't disagree, because it's a really cool fucking scene. Uh, he goes in there and just, you know, this, he, he, Bill Paxton's fucking Bill Paxton. So it's just great. Like, I don't know, he just comes off awesome in that scene. So I'm when I first watched it, I'm kind of with it, but the scene where Caleb goes back home, or his you know his dad and his sister taking back home or whatever, they do a blood transfusion. They take and not all of his blood, just like this much, and his dad puts it puts some of his and his you know, and it kills him. Just you're good. That's all it was. Apparently this, but he knew exactly. I guess apparently all the vampire blood hangs out right here. Enough to fill up, you know, a little jar or whatever. And that's it. It's all it is. It takes blood transfusion. And you're good to go. You're good to be like, okay, I'm back. So I'm like, no problem. Are you fucking kidding me? Uh, it, it, I always assume it was like a virus. Like, there's actually, uh, in the 28 Days Later uh, movie, in one of, the, uh, one of the drafts of the script, the, the actual ending was going to be, at one point, you know, when the dad gets hit, the, you know, blood in the eye, uh... Killian Murphy's uh, character, I forget his name now in, in the movie, uh, was going to sacrifice himself and, like, do a complete blood transfusion and bring him back. And the writer's like, that's fucking retarded. Like, they literally even said, like, as a writer, like, no, because how would you get every piece of that virus out? Like, you would have no way of knowing, you know, if, of, of your entire body. All the little capillaries and shit. You can't get it all out. Apparently, in this movie, though, it's that much. It's, it's a little bean jar of blood. You're good. You're good to go. You just, and not only that, but then... Because I would think, like, if you're going to do a, a blood transfusion, it'd take a little bit more than that. But whatever. But then they bring the girl in, and just send it to her. It's just like, what? Really? And I like the fact that they don't even, like, test it. Like, a little sister just runs into the barn, door wide open. Like, not even, like, you know, maybe it didn't work. No, she had complete faith. Like, nope, it worked. I guarantee fucking tea. I would have just loved that scene if she would have opened it up and it just blew his ass up. Like, just instant. <laughs> would have been great. But no, instead, it's this. Uh, I just do not care for this movie. I know it has its fans. Uh, it has, you know, whatever. Uh, I was not even the reviews at the time. Because even though this actually did bomb at the box office, I believe. But the critical review was just like, oh, this is one of the best fucking vampire movies ever. And if I remember correctly, because I, I remember kind of reading them around the same time. Not when it came out, but, you know, when I was on the computer. Uh, Lost Boys did not really get any good critical review at all. Like, it, had, it definitely had, like, the fans. But critics didn't care for, but they love this, and I just don't, I don't get it, uh, seriously, I, I would much rather see Bill Paxton, what's his name, Severin, Seven, Severin, something like that, I would much, in fact, it would have been cool just to watch this group, like, fuck the protagonist, like, ah, but we threw this fucking queer love story in, and it just ruins it for me, I just don't care, uh, and then on top of that, everybody was like, well, the music's great, no, the music isn't that great, it was okay, it was very mediocre, I'm sorry, <sighs> I don't know. Overall, thumbs down on Near Dark. Fucking, ugh. I, I, I don't like it. Uh, I've seen it twice. I watched it when I first bought it, and his literally just set in my collection, collecting dust, until this week. And I bought this back in like, oh, oh five maybe? I'll say oh five. I'll say oh five. I don't, maybe, maybe a little later. Maybe I go see it. But I, I watched it then. Uh, no, and I, and I plan on making this on the shelf for another decade. Or longer before I crack it open again. So, uh, so yeah, Halloween H two O, bam, near dark. Uh, yes, that, that's my review. Just blowing raspberries on the review. That's my review. Um, yeah, so you know that's, that's it. Uh, you got any comments? You know, feedback. Maybe you're like, fuck you, Phantom. Near dark's awesome. It's great. Maybe it's a girl band. I don't know. And that's the funny thing was they. I guess they, they were planning on remaking it. Like a, you know. 10, 15 years ago, and I guess it, you know, for whatever reason, it kind of stalled, and then Twilight came out, and they just shit, you're like, nope, nope, we're not doing it. it it's way too similar, it really is. It's 
practically the same fucking movie. Uh, and yeah, you guys know how to the Twilight movie, so it's all shit. So this is, to me, this is on that Twilight end of the shit, like right here. Put it over there on the Twilight side, it sucks. So, uh, so yeah, that's all I got. Uh, yeah, have a good weekend, and until next time.